straight up it's finished or get fucked. You know what I mean? Like that, those are your options almost at this point, the way they are. Download the All-Star app. Make your picks for UFC fights, challenge your friends, level up and win prizes. Link in description. Get it now. Let's jump right into it. November 4th, you return, going to Brazil, facing another prospect. You know, what do you think of uh, Ishmael Bonfim? Tough kid, but nothing new that I've seen. So, you know, it's just going to be a fun fight. We'll see how it ends up. Definitely. And, you know, Bonfim, he came into the UFC with a, with a nice first round knockout over uh, another prospect, mm-hmm. Terrence McKinney, then lost to uh, Benoit St. Denise. What did you think of how St. Denise uh, handled Bonfim? Uh, that was a good game plan. He kicked him, got him, got him angry and aggressive, which is how he gets, and then made him how to make a mistake, took him down and submitted him. So, I mean, that's pretty much like a pretty simple game plan to take that dude out. Yeah, the aggression, right? It seems like that could be his Achilles heels to pull that out of him and have him make mistakes, right? Yeah, yeah, and I'm, I'm expecting him to come aggressive at me too like that, which is going to not work well for him. Well, fighting at, in Brazil, probably, he's probably just <laughs> going to do that anyways, right? It's just like yeah, the crowd yeah, is crazy. Yeah, there's no way yeah, he's he's for sure just going to come at me. <laughs> yeah. Well, do you enjoy that, right? You don't want to chase people, right? You don't want to dance around for 15 minutes. You want to fight. No, nah, I like a phone booth fight, man. But uh, I'm going to fight him pretty smart. And uh, he's got a lot of holes that I'm going to just expose the shit out of. It seems like when you enter the UFC with this like highlight reel finish, people forget about everything else in their game, they just focus on like, oh, he's a knockout artist, right? Like, you, you got that from yeah. a lot of guys that come into the UFC. Yeah, but that's just how it is, man. The sport's shallow. It's 80% casual, so it's like, what do you expect, you know what I mean? Opposite from casual, you know, you, you had that Jeff Bronson fight lined up last year, and then it was canceled. You had a, a hip injury, something that has been bothering you for a while. You had a hip, you had a hip injury before, right? Yeah, I had a, I injured my hip. Uh, I was sham. I had to pull out of a fight. I was supposed to fight some Russia in Russia, some Russia in some Russian in Russia. I don't even remember the dude's name, but I had to pull out of that fight because I hurt my hip, and then I ended up getting surgery at the end of like 2019, and then uh, yeah, I ended up getting hurt in 2019. Had surgery at the end of 2019, and then um, let's see. <clears throat> yeah, and then I fought Jim Miller. I fought Jim Miller uh, when, like, eight months after that hip surgery. So I was like, fuck yeah, my hip's good. And then, uh, and it actually has been good. I mean, well, honestly, it was bothering me after that surgery, but um, I'm like a master compensator, so I kind of just dealt with it and figured it was just, you know what I mean, pain that I'm going to have to live with, right, from the surgery. But it turns out the surgery wasn't really the best. And, um... I ended up tearing my hip again when I was supposed to fight Jesse Ronson. I had to pull out of that fight. I had another hip surgery. This surgery went well. My hip feels like I never even injured it now. Like it's 100%. It's almost better than it was before. And then uh, I was supposed to fight St. I was actually supposed to fight St. Denis. And then I had to pull out of that fight because I had another injury, a small uh, injury, like a back injury that didn't really like. It wasn't like a major injury where I was like, oh, fuck, I can't, you know what I mean, whatever. But it was an injury that would have put me out long enough that I wouldn't have been able to um, give him like 100% of me, you know what I mean? And I'm not going to, I don't want to go into a fight like half-ass and, and then everyone being like, oh, that's fucking you now, you know what I mean? Because there's enough people that count me out anyway. And so uh, I had to pull out of that fight because I was going to be, I was going to have enough time to be comfortable enough to be ready for that fight. And then so uh, I recuperated that, been really taking care of my body. And now I feel fucking good, right? And all my boys in the gym, it's like Alex Hernandez told me today, he's like, dude, he's like from like last camp or beginning of this camp to like where you are right now. He's like, you're like, he's like, you seem like you're like 15 years younger, bro. And like the way, like the way that I was sparring today, like everyone was just kind of like, holy shit, Vince is a fucking vet. Like he's, he's, he's here. And so, um, you know, that made me feel pretty good hearing that from the team and, and whatnot. And so. I'm ready, man. This this motherfucker better hope this, this motherfucker better hope he's having a really good day and some someone's on his side because I'm gonna shit on him. I think people forget, man. You have a seventy percent winning rate in the UFC in the lightweight division. Like that's yeah, that's difficult. Yeah, it's not very easy, man. We I mean the lightweight division is arguably like one of the biggest shark tanks in the UFC. And uh man, I don't know, I've just done very well. 
but I, I think it's just all that. I think it contributes to me just being like an actual fighter. You know what I mean? Like I'm not these guys who had to go train and become a fighter. I was a I was a born fighter. I'm one of those guys who was just born with these with these uh, talents. And although I am trained, right, I'm, I'm a very technical fighter. Um, I didn't start off that way, you know. So and I think that kind of pushed me through a lot. And then over the years, I started becoming more of a technical guy and learning, you know, skill, be a little smarter with my technique and whatnot. And so, uh, you know, I mean, here we are. And on November 4th, you're going to see a completely different me if you guys have always seen. Did, did the hip affect you against uh, Mark Madsen in the fight? No, it didn't. But uh, I kind of went in there with some smaller injuries. I kind of did. But I don't know, man. I feel like I kind of got cheated out of that win. I feel like I should have won a split decision against him, right? Like, he took me down, like, once every round. In the second round, he took me down, but I ended up getting him in a submission and was, like, controlling him. But... The judges gave him my control time, right? Didn't give me my submission attempts. The third round, I, I feel, was his. And I feel like I screeched out the first round. And the second round, I definitely won, right? But like I said, only one judge gave me the second round. The rest of them gave him every other round, which is just a testament to how garbage those motherfuckers are, right? But then I also see fights like... And, and then when people still talk shit about that, I'm like, look at Alex Pereira and when he fought Jan Blakovich. Blakovich literally controlled him way more he, i think he had like another two minutes control time than Matson over me and he had and he had less punches and uh, Pereira had less punches landed against Jan than i had against Matson. so i'm like where's the fucking consistency here you know what i mean and, and he won a split decision which i feel like i should have won but i don't know it is what it is um I'm, I'm not really like dwelling on it but it definitely pissed me off and there's a lot of fire in me because of that so bomb team's gonna pay for it there you go um you're 40 years old right and I was looking at yeah, your. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna be 41 next month. Yeah, yeah. I was looking at you. Have the same birthday as me, man. I was just like looking oh, at. Oh, do I? Like, I? Oh, let's go. You got the Thanksgiving birthday, right? Like it lands on Thanksgiving. Yeah, I think it's Thanksgiving. Is it on Thanksgiving this year? I it's think so. I think so. But uh, man, age is something that people will always point to, right? As an athlete, do you get that from yeah. a lot of people? I do, and I kind of just laugh at it because it really shows me how much, how little they know about me. You know what I mean? Like. <laughs> There's a reason why I'm still the way I am. And, and if you watch the, my fight against uh, Austin Hubbard, right, where people counted me out, I'm sure they probably thought he was going to wear me out because he's known for wearing people out. But look what I did to him. Like, I wore him out. And so, I don't know. Even after that, people still count me out. Like, man, people are just fucking dumb, bro. They count me out for, like, the stupidest shit, right? And that's why I'm like, whatever. You guys don't know shit. It is what it is. <laughs> exactly. And, you know, you've been at Factory X for a little bit now, a few camps. And uh, I see that you're working with Markel Mar Mar Maridos. Maderos, Maderos, yeah. yeah. Markel, Markel Maderos. Man, how good is he? Man, Markel's good. He's actually the one in the gym that really gives me a lot of trouble with the stand-up. His stand-up is, is really slick. And he's, he's a very intelligent stand-up striker. And he's very slick. And he's the one that gives me the most trouble in the gym. Out of anybody, he gives me the most trouble. Phenomenal. And you got also uh, Jonathan Martinez and Chris Gutierrez. Like they're they're like the I don't they should have a name, right? They're like the leg chopper twins or the leg chop brothers or something. Oh yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? How is this smart those guys? Little chupacabras eating legs. <laughs> Man, they did a really good job. Jonathan Martinez, that's the second uh, leg kick finish too. So he's tied with Barboza about that. So, I mean, if he gets a third and he, and he takes that title from Barboza, that's going to be a pretty big accomplishment for him. That's pretty cool. Without a doubt. And, man, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing this. You have a lot of uh, something built in you, man, that, that needs to be released <laughs> in this fight, right? <laughs> what do you think? Yeah, these motherfuckers, my nickname's from hell for a reason. And, <laughs> and man, they're going to find out. I just, that's why I think it's just so funny, man. So many people just don't know me and, and how I am and, and what I'm capable of. And it kind of makes me laugh when they, when they just count me out and don't realize it. Uh, I wanted to pick your brain about uh, something, you know, your first fight in the UFC, you, you know, you entered the UFC undefeated, you went through tough 15, yeah, and then you first suffered your first professional loss, right, in your debut. Yeah. How did that impact you and your career? Um, it lit that fire, right? Um, I, uh, I'm not that kind of guy where when I lose, I'm not going to like dwell or be broken, you know what I mean? I'm not a man that you could shatter. I'm pretty bulletproof mentally. Um, and I kind of contribute that to just like the turmoil and, and difficulty that I've had in my life, right? I've been kind of conditioned to, to not be a quitter and, and never give up regardless of my gas gets wall. But when I lose and that kind of shit happens, that really pisses me off, right? And, and that that fight, like, like I'm not going to lie, I cried a lot. Like that bothered me, right? That, that hurt me really bad. But 
my tears soon turned to anger and, and then, you know what I mean? Wh- what did I do? I beat the hell out of uh, Garrett Wiley and then I beat the, I beat the real shit out of Anthony and Jaquani. Anthony Kwanji, he, Anthony and Jaquani was never the same after I beat him. So that's just like a little testament of, of my mental capabilities and, and what I'm really capable of when, when someone pisses me off and I don't feel like I don't want to be stopped. Yeah. That's, I think that's one unique characteristic you have is that if you get pissed off, you can control that. A lot of people cannot, yeah, I used to I used to tell people like it's a controlled violence. <laughs> um, you I'm like just yeah. a I'm just a I'm just a shotgun that's cocked ready to go, you know. Um, UFC, you saw the split. What are your thoughts on on that? I mean, I don't know. I I don't really know the full details. I know it had something to do with McGregor and, and him being in the testing pool, which. I don't know if if it's like an issue where you saw it, it was like, hey, he needs to be in the pool for six months. And the UFC was like, nah, we go ahead and throw him in. You know what I mean? They try to just, you know what I mean? They try to big dick USADA. I don't know. I kind of sided with USADA over that. But, I mean, it's McGregor. So, of course, he's going to get special treatment, right? It's kind of, it's a little absurd. And he's definitely on the fucking juice. I don't know. I don't care what anybody says. That motherfucker's juicing. So, like, in that aspect of it, I, I'm not really like, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not. I'm on Usada's side about that, but at the same time, Usada's kind of garbage too, man. Like, I don't really trust them. You know what I mean? And I have a feeling when I go out to Brazil, this motherfucker's going to be juiced too, because I, I'm I'm fairly confident Usada doesn't test guys out there because when they're when their soccer referees make a bad call, they kill them. You know what I mean? So imagine some Usada agent who's trying to drug test some dude, and if he fails, like you know what I mean? They're going to blame the Usada dude, not the idiot that was that was doing illegal shit. So I don't know. That that's just what's in my mind. I'm hoping they do their job good, right? But I don't know. In 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 this day and age, especially today, with the way things are, I don't I don't trust anybody. Fuck. Yeah, especially like it's like the judging to me. You know what I mean? It's like the refereeing. Is yeah. Oh yeah. Like, what is that guy? Tim. What's that guy's name? Tim Wills. That's trying to get people killed. Is that the dude? I don't know. He's, there's like a referee that I don't know. My, my buddy Jordan Kurtz is sending videos, and I think his name's Tim Wills or Tim Wells. Mm-hmm. He's a referee, and he's he sent me like three or four videos of this guy, like. Basically letting people fucking die. Some guy got his leg broke, right, in the fight. Tim didn't stop it. He let him still take some shots. Another girl got her arm broke by an arm bar. He didn't stop the fight. He wasn't even like, close enough to stop the fight to prevent her arm from breaking. So, I don't know. I think that's, like, the most dangerous thing, man, is those motherfuckers that just don't know what the hell they're doing. Yeah, we do. And judges, judges are definitely a part of that. Yeah, we do need to have some uh, some revamping and, and all of that. I feel the judges need their asses kicked, honestly. I feel like they need to get into a fight, bro, because... They don't know what they're looking at half the time, right? Like when they're they're watching a fight and and they just don't know what the fuck they're looking at half the time. They base it off their feelings and, you know, I mean, so on and so forth. When there's actual criteria they need to go by. Well, you know, slowly and surely, former fighters are getting in there, right? Refereeing and judging. And I think. Yeah, yeah, we got Chris Lieben in there, right? Chris Lieben just uh, started judging. Was he judging? I think judging and refereeing. I think they do both. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's actually a really good idea. But the other side of the the other side of that double edged sword is, what if his homies are fighting? That's right. That's what right. if one of his old teammates are fighting? What if, you know what I mean? Someone from his camp is fighting that he used to train at. You know what I mean? So that's kind of like the other side of that double edged sword for me, where he better fucking be, he better be like judging fairly. Yeah. You know, professional. What I mean? You gotta be professional. Yeah, yeah. And and if he's and if he's gonna judge a certain way, at least let it be consistent, mm-hmm. right? Like that, that's, that's the thing. Consistency is key. And, and a lot of these judges, there's just no consistency because they don't know what the fuck you're looking at. Hopefully they fix all that, man. Anyways, man, it doesn't matter. You got a fight okay. coming up November 4th, UFC fight night in yes, Sao sir, Paulo. Those fucking judges Brazil. determine my fate either. Yeah, man. So you got to go out there and, uh, you know, finish the fight, I guess. That's, you know, I talked to many yeah. fighters and they're just like, I got to finish the fight because these judges, I don't believe yeah. you and trust them at all. Straight up, it's finished or get fucked. You know what I mean? Like that, those are your options almost at this point with the way they are. 